Hello everyone. Today we're going to be making garbanzo bean soup as well as some Cuban sandwiches. So I'm really excited about this meal tonight. And the first thing I did was take some dried beans, some dried garbanzo beans, and soak them overnight. They can soak for at least eight hours um, or overnight, which is what I did. And we'll get started from there. These are the beans. They've been soaking all night. I had the lid on them. I'm going to drain them. We'll add some fresh water. The garbanzo beans have been rinsed and fresh water added to them. One of the things I like to do is add a nice big piece of ham stock, or in this case, I got a country ham chunk that adds a lot of flavor, adds some natural salt to the beans as they cook down. I've got our ham chunk in the beans now. We're gonna start this on high until it comes to a boil for, um, it takes a little while to boil. And then once it boils, you're gonna reduce it to low and simmer it for an hour and a half. All right, the beans and the ham hock or ham chunk have been simmering away for 90 minutes for an hour and a half. The next thing I'm gonna do is get a potato masher and just lightly press on those beans to soften them up. All right, so I've got the potato masher. I'm gonna lightly press on a lot of these beans. I'll stir them around a little. Lightly press to soften them up. All right, so part of the prep work for the next part of the soup is the potatoes. So we have, I have four medium sized potatoes. You could do two large or three to four small to medium potatoes. Um, so I'm gonna cut these up into little diced size pieces. Okay, have all the potatoes diced up. The next part is half of a white onion or a sweet onion. I prefer the sweet onion, um, but you can do a white onion as well. And I'm gonna mince that up uh, very finely. Okay, minced up all the onions, chop those up, and now I'm going to start on the pepper. The recipe calls for a green bell pepper, and I feel like the green bell peppers just take too much of the flavor away from the other food that's in the soup. It just tastes so strongly of green bell pepper to me that I like um, either an orange or a yellow bell pepper, so we're going to do an orange bell pepper today. All right, we got our bell pepper diced up. Again, you can use the green bell pepper if you like uh, for the green bell pepper flavor. I prefer a milder pepper, so a yellow or an orange. This one's orange. Have some minced garlic. Our onions are ready to go. I get the diced ham that's already diced up in the bags at the store, but you can always use leftover ham and cut it up finely. And we have some chicken broth and we're ready for the next step. Our beans are still simmering away. We're going to take some olive oil. We have some extra virgin olive oil here. I'm gonna heat our pan. And I like to use cast iron. You can tell I have uh, the cast iron cookware. Makes for nice even heating, but you can use whatever you have on hand as well. And the first thing we're going to saute are the onions and the pepper. So I'm gonna add those to my skillet. And our orange bell pepper. We're going to let that cook down for a little while until they get translucent. I don't really want them brown, but I do want them to sweat and get kind of a clear translucent look on the onions. Then we'll add our ham, our garlic, our potatoes, salt and pepper, and a few other seasonings along the way. We'll give those just a few minutes. Okay, it's been a few minutes. We are now ready to add our other ingredients. Our onions and our peppers have softened a bit. Added a little bit more olive oil and some salt and pepper. 
I'm going to add my ham next. So I have my diced ham. I'll do one package of that. I get the pre diced type, but you can use whatever you like. I'm going to stir that in. I'm also going to add my garlic. So I have the minced garlic. Again, you can get three or four cloves of garlic and mince them up, or you can buy the pre-minced garlic in the produce section of your store. I'm going to stir that in. I'm going to get that mixed up before I add my potatoes, or it gets a little harder to stir and blend everything together once the pan gets full. I really like the colors. The orange is a very pretty color. And we're going to add our potatoes now. So we have our diced potatoes. Be careful as you stir these and mix them in. And I'm really just getting these up to temperature. I'm not trying to cook the potatoes. I'm not trying to brown everything. I just want them to get up to temperature before I add them into the stock pot so it doesn't bring down the temperature of the pot. So I'm just kind of heating these through right now. I'm getting them coated with the oil peppers and the onions. I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper as well. This is to taste, so you can add however much you think. And they're just about ready to add to the stock pot. Turn the heat off. And let's check on our beans. Okay, so the beans are nice and softened up. They've soaked all night. They've cooked for an hour and a half. We used our potato masher to soften them a little bit more. I still have my ham hock in here. I'm going to leave that in there while it's cooking, but before I serve it, I am going to take that out. And now I'm going to add some of my other ingredients. I'm going to start stirring these in. This pan is very heavy, <laughs> so I like to take a little bit of the weight out of it first before I try to pick it up. the rest of it in. That is one full pot. Okay, I'm going to stir the beans in with the potatoes and the ham. I'm going to top it off with some chicken broth. Depends on how full your pot is. Um, maybe add about a cup or so until it needs to be topped off, but you don't want it to spill over. Okay, now we're gonna add some more seasoning. I'm gonna add two to three bay leaves. And you don't eat those, you're gonna take those out right before serving, but they add a great flavor. I'm gonna have my saffron. I'm going to do six to eight strands of saffron. Saffron is a, a very expensive spice um, and a little bit goes a long way. So 
six to eight strands of that. I'm gonna do about an eighth of a teaspoon of basil. You can do fresh basil or I get mine uh, in paste. You can do either one is fine. And then about an eighth a teaspoon of paprika. That's about what I have left in this uh, container here. So I'm just gonna finish off that container. And then you're gonna add salt and pepper to taste again. So about an eighth of a teaspoon or so of salt and pepper. And we're gonna stir in our seasonings. We're gonna let this cook all day. Normally around two to three hours. I let mine go a lot longer than that. And then the last 30 minutes or so, we're gonna add some chorizo sausage. I'm gonna fry up a little bit of chorizo sausage uh, in the skillet before I add it in. But that's gonna be right at the very end, uh, just so it doesn't overpower the soup as it cooks all day. So I'm gonna let the potatoes and the beans continue to get softened and let all of the spices mix together. And let this cook for several hours. All right, so it's been several hours since our garbanzo bean soup has been cooking. I am now going to add the chorizo sausage. I like the pork, but they have lots of different flavors that you can get. Um, they have beef and I think a cheese one, but I like the traditional pork chorizo. So I'm going to cut this open and put it in our pan here so that we can fry it up and then add it to our soup. We're picking up the chorizo sausage. I'm going to turn it down a little bit so it doesn't splatter so much. Chorizo has a lot of red coloring in it, so I highly recommend using a dark spoon or spatula, one that won't stain. Um, wood would probably stain red, but you want something that's not going to stain and that would wash off pretty easily. That's again why I really like using the cast iron skillets. Um, things don't stain or stick to it. Okay, so I've cooked down the chorizo sausage. Um, some of my family members don't like the sausage flavor in the soup, so I've gone ahead and removed some of the soup and put it aside to another bowl, um, another pot, so that we can keep some for them, and then the rest of the pot is going to get the chorizo sausage added to it. In the meantime, while this uh, finishes cooking a little bit longer, I'm going to start the sandwiches soon. So I have my sandwich press, my little sandwich maker here. Um, nice little grill here. I have some bread. I normally try to get cumin bread, um, but the bakery was out this morning. I went too early and they only had the French bread. So we'll make do with our French bread. You can also make Cuban bread as well. And you can get whatever cheese, pork, and ham, and roast beef that you like. I usually try to get a thicker cut of roast beef, um, some carving ham, and we have Swiss cheese, mustard, and pickles. So all of that we're going to assemble together and put in our uh, sandwich maker. All right, so I'm going to add our sausage now. I can get our pan here. It's a very heavy pan. Gonna add it all in and give it a stir. This has a lot of paprika, garlic spices in it, salt in it. Um, it gives the soup just a nice red, golden color to it. Really deepens the soup up. I'm gonna let this cook down for about 30 or 45 more minutes. Um, and then I'll take out the ham hocks and you can see the bay leaf kind of floating around. We'll take those out as well right before serving. So we're getting close. Hey guys, it's time to make our Cuban. So I had the bread. I went ahead and sliced it um, diagonal and in half. And then I also cut it in half in the middle as well so we can prepare our sandwich. I went ahead and plugged in my sandwich maker here. And you could also do this on a griddle or a grill um, or a flat press, anything you have that might be handy. Since my oven has been preoccupied with the pots on the stove, I wanted to 
um, get it done here uh, with the sandwich maker instead. So I've got some of my cheese. I'm just using Swiss cheese today, but you can use whatever kind of cheese you like. And I'm gonna use the cheese to kind of spread the mustard around. Put two pieces on that side. I have um, what's called carving board ham or just kind of a thicker cut of ham. It's not super thin. I like to have a lot of meat in the bite. And I'm gonna layer up the sandwich with the cheese and the ham. And then I have some roast beef. I'm gonna add that to it as well. Give it a nice beef flavor. And then we have some pickles. Grab a fork. And we'll put our pickles on. These are a little thicker than usual. We cut them up a little thicker than we normally do. You can have whatever kind of pickle. Some people do the long shaped Spears, you can do that as well. Right. Once you get the sandwich constructed, we're gonna put it in our sandwich maker. And kind of hold it in place without burning your fingers. And we're gonna try to squeeze it closed to give it that nice, flat, pressed sandwich look to it and we'll make a few more. Okay, so our sandwich, that's about done. I did turn it around so it would kind of flatten even on both sides. Um, that's it guys, that's your Cuban sandwich. And it's sizzling. All right, the garbanzo bean soup. Looks really, really good. You can see all the beans, potatoes, ham, that bell pepper onions looks delicious everything's very soft here's our finished product we have our cuban sandwich and our garbanzo bean soup